Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Hardware Breakdown video, where today I'm going to be covering the recently more often requested Xbox Ally as a follow-up to my Xbox Ally X video and break down this base model and what to expect from the hardware that is certainly much more budget-oriented compared to the premium device. But before we get started, if you are new here and like this type of content, consider subbing to catch my weekly uploads, and finally, smash the like button so that way YouTube shares it to others who may enjoy it as well. Now let's dive into the hardware that is powering the Xbox Ally. The main component powering the device is an APU, a term used by AMD that stands for an accelerated processing unit, and contains both the GPU and CPU on the same die. The APU found in the Xbox Ally is a Z2A APU with a configurable TDP of 6 to 20 watts and is very similar to the Steam Deck APU, but I'll go over that towards the end of this video. For now, let's just break down each component one by one, starting with the CPU inside the APU, which is a quad-core CPU that operates up to a max boost clock speed of 3.8 GHz. The Z2A has eight total processing threads thanks to SMT. SMT stands for Simultaneous Multi-Threading and allows each of the four CPU cores to execute two threads at once, essentially allowing each physical CPU core to appear as two logical cores to the operating system. The processor can switch between these threads rapidly, executing instructions from different threads in the same clock cycle. The CPU also has two megabytes of L2 cache, with each CPU core getting 512 kilobytes bytes embedded as their own, as well as 4 megabytes of shared L3 cache memory. These caches are used to store recently accessed data that the CPU is using, with the larger and a little slower shared L3 cache working more as a buffer for that data before it is used. Pretty straightforward on the CPU side of things. Now let's dive into the graphics, which has less explicit details aside just from its clock speeds, CU counts, and what architecture it is from AMD. But we can gather from current hardware that the Xbox Allies Z2A APU derives from, and that is the Steam Deck and its GPU, adjusting for some information that is actually stated by AMD and plugging it in to get an idea of performance and what it's capable of. But for this info, we can gather that the GPU in the Xbox Ally is an RDNA 2 GPU that has 8 CUs and operates with a core clock speed of up to 1800 MHz. Each CPU in this GPU contains 64 stream processors for a total of 512 shader processors altogether and are crucial for graphics rendering and the calculations behind it, as well as 4 texture mapping units each for a total of 32 TMUs altogether, which are responsible for mapping the 2D images to 3D models and handling all the texture filtering, as the name of implies. Each CU also has one ray accelerator for a total of eight ray accelerator cores that handle the ray tracing calculations for the GPU and enable this technology. And finally, it has 16 render output units that handle things like anti-aliasing and final data processing before sending the final data to the frame buffer to display on the screen. When we adjust for the clock speeds of the Ally GPU with these numbers plugged in, the Xbox Ally should have a ballpark performance capability of about 28.8 gigapixels a second for a pixel fill rate just over 51 gigatexels a second for a texel fill rate, and will have about 1.84 teraflops of floating point performance. Pretty solid for a handheld all around, if the price is manageable. But performance goes a little bit further, and so we need to talk about RAM, which for the Xbox Ally is 16 gigabytes of shared ddr 5 X memory that operates at 6400 mega transfers per second. LPDDR5X RAM is capable of much higher speeds at lower energy consumption than the prior LPDDR5 RAM found in a lot of other handhelds up until this point, but it appears that they save the extra speed you can get out of the LPDDR5X memory for the premium Xbox Ally X as they cap the speed on the Xbox Ally to 6400 mega transfers a second instead of the 8000 plus that the RAM is capable of and that the Ally X will have available. But either way, still uses much less energy before doing so, so at least there's a win here for the RAM as far as RAM being concerned, even if they aren't upping the mega transfers per second or the speed of the RAM to what the memory modules are actually capable of. Now the main part that a lot of people have asked me about, and probably the more interesting part for a lot of folks, is the difference between the Steam Deck and the Xbox Ally in terms of performance. Now people have also asked about the Xbox Ally X, and just to be clear, performance-wise, the Xbox Ally X and anything with a Z2 Extreme APU is going to be light years beyond on a lot of other handhelds unless they likewise have similar APUs. But as far as the Steam Deck and Xbox Ally go specifically, they're actually pretty comparable in terms of raw hardware power. They are running the same CPU and GPU as far as generation and core counts go. 
The main difference mainly comes from the Xbox Allies Z2A APU having a slightly higher configurable TDP of 6 to 20 watts versus 4 to 15 watts in the Steam Deck. Now, not only does this extra power draw hint to higher clock speeds, it actually matches up with the higher clock speeds that are listed on AMD's product page for the Z2A APU, allowing for higher clocks than the Steam Deck with a GPU at up to 1800 MHz versus 1600 megahertz in the steam deck and a cpu of the xbox ally with clock speeds up to 3.8 gigahertz versus 3.5 gigahertz in the steam deck the ram capacity and bandwidth between the two are the same 6400 mega transfers per second when comparing to the oled steam deck but faster than the non-oled steam decks 5500 mega transfers per second but it's also important to remember that the ally also uses the more energy efficient lp ddr5 x ram further assisting with that thermal wiggle room a little bit as well over the less energy efficient lp DDR5 RAM in the Steam Deck, and likely lowering temps ever so slightly as well on top of that for the RAM chip. So overall, even with a little bit faster memory depending on the model, and a faster CPU and a little bit faster GPU, performance should at least be on par with the Steam Deck, but of course a little bit better, and whatever advantage those extra couple hundred megahertz of clock speed on both the CPU and GPU provide. And if you want to keep it to the black and white on paper, then just add 12.5% to overall gaming performance as far as gaming goes, as that's what the exact clock speed boost of the GPU is is, although it's not always this clear cut. Of course, assuming that there's no memory or other bottlenecks that makes that type of data null, the point is, if you want to know what the entry-level Xbox Ally will be capable of, removing any operating system efficiencies or maybe even deficiencies, I would say at least what the Steam Deck is capable of maybe a little bit better. One thing to keep in mind, though, is the Xbox Ally will have a higher 1920 by 1080p display versus the Steam Deck's 1280 by 800 meaning if the hardware has the same or even a little better performance levels, if you run both machines, machines at their native screen resolutions for the internal graphics rendering, the Xbox Ally would be pushing 116% more pixels at the same settings, which will definitely affect performance. Thus, to avoid blurriness and jaggies that come from upscaling lower resolutions to the natural native 1080p screen, you would have to then lower graphics settings in the game to compensate for the higher overall resolution while maintaining the same performance. Now, you could argue the higher resolutions on a small screen would look sharp enough to negate lower graphics settings, but just something to keep in mind especially if you were wanting to take advantage of the higher 120 hertz display and aim for higher frame rates. If you're hitting anywhere near that native 1080p rendering resolution, you are going to suffer performance-wise in comparison to rendering native 800p resolution on the Steam Deck. Of course, that's without considering upscaling of any kind or just natively rendering the game at a lower resolution, but just something to keep in mind that I wanted to throw out there. Overall, I'm excited to get my hands on these devices and do some testing on my own to kind of answer some of these questions, but this is all I have for you guys today in this quick update video. It's been a rough week for me. I haven't been able to do a lot of work on this. This video was the easiest one for me to make as far as understanding the hardware and describing what it's capable of. And people requested this one, so I figured I would pump it out this week. I do apologize. I have a week and a half left before my vacation, and I have so much to do. I feel like I don't have enough time in the world. So I'm trying not to neglect the channel. I do apologize, but at the end of July, I'll be back full throttle to making the longer and more in-depth content that you all are used to. That said, I hope to see you guys around in next week's video as well, and I hope you all have a great morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on when you're watching this. Peace.